Thank you, Brother Carrick, Sister Trish, uh, tonight for helping in the live stream service. And certainly trust uh, that you've had a good day. And uh, the Lord's good. And uh, all that he doeth is righteous. And God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And I'm going to be tonight in Acts chapter number 3. And also in Acts chapter 4. Now I'm going to give you just a minute to... Uh, Find your place uh, there in Acts chapter 3, beginning in verse 1. And uh, I'm excited tonight to to dive into God's Word and to share with you what He has laid on my heart today. And uh, I appreciate as I uh, sit there tonight, I listen to the preacher uh, pray and, and approach the throne of grace. And I noticed that he made comment that And God, you're still on the throne. And I'm thankful tonight to know that in 2020, uh, God's still on the throne. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he changeth not. And he's the Lord of glory. And I'm thankful tonight uh, to be one of his. And I I, I trust that wherever you're at tonight, that if you found your place in Acts chapter 3 and verse 1, would you say amen? amen? Amen. Would you shout amen? Praise the Lord. The Bible says here, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who seeing Peter... And John, about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have and give I thee, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his ankle bones and his feet, his feet and his ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Turn to me over one chapter to chapter 4, and I'll begin our reading there tonight. We'll pick up this biblical record uh, in verse number 7 of chapter 4. Isn't it amazing here that Peter and John, I mean, the Lord did a great work for this man that was lame on his feet, And yet this religious bunch uh, was unhappy and could not be satisfied because of the one who had done the healing. And we see in verse 7, And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done unto this impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised up from the dead, whom God raised from the dead, even by him that this man stand here before you hold. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John 
and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. And they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Father, we love you tonight. We thank you, Lord, for your marvelous grace. Lord, the depths of your love, the sweetness of your fellowship. God, the compassion in your friendship. Lord, uh, the depths of your goodness towards us. And Father, I pray tonight, Lord, that you'd help, uh, you'd help us in the preaching of your word. And Father, may you be the preacher tonight. And may old time religion live on. And we'll give praise. For we ask it in the darling name of Jesus. Amen and amen. I, I want to take my thought tonight from Acts chapter 4 and verse number 13. I was completely taken by that portion of scripture that we've read so many times, but God just dealt with our heart and uh, regarding that portion of scripture. The Bible here, speaking of Peter and John, uh, after they come under the examination of the elders and the rulers of Israel, the Bible said they, talking about the rulers, uh, they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. I thought about that, and, and I thought about how in my life, naturally speaking, uh, hardly many days go by when I'm not around somebody, especially somebody that maybe I don't see on a regular basis, and uh, we'll talk for a moment, and at some point in time, uh, they'll say something like this, my, you remind me of your dad. Or maybe they might say, Something like this. Uh, you've, got, uh, you've got a lot of Terry in you. you. You remind me of your mother's people. And, and, I, and I'm so proud of that. Uh, I, that makes me feel so good uh, because uh, I love my mother and I love my dad and I love my family. And it means so much to me to think that somebody might think that I might be like them. I've watched my dad over the years, and my, how I believe that uh, he looks so much like his dad. And I thought if he looks like his dad, and I look like my dad, then maybe someday I might look like Grandpa just a little bit. And that means a whole lot to me. It may not mean a whole lot to anybody else. Uh, but I count that as a very precious thing. But here in the Scriptures, uh, uh, the men of Israel, uh, they took note of uh, uh, Peter and John uh, uh, because they resembled Jesus. Uh, now I'm not talking about uh, naturally speaking uh, so much or something like that. Uh, uh, but I'm saying tonight, that they spoke like Jesus. Uh, they had the testimony that Jesus had. Uh, their walk was like Jesus. Uh, their witness was like Jesus. Uh, and I thought about uh, Peter and John here. Uh, and you know, uh, it hadn't been too long ago, maybe just a couple of months, that Peter, uh, Peter was... Uh, afraid, uh, uh, even at the accusation of a little maid. Uh, in fact, so much, uh, in fact, so much uh, uh, that he, uh, it caused him to curse uh, and deny the Lord. Uh, and, uh, you know, Peter, uh, uh, he was uh, maybe afraid just a, a little short time uh, before that, uh, uh, but now all of a sudden uh, something has changed. Uh, it's no longer the same Peter that it used to be uh, but now uh, it's a man uh, who's been filled uh, with the Holy Ghost of God uh, and the power uh, of the Holy Ghost uh, uh, rests upon him uh, and there's power and there's boldness uh, in his testimony uh, and in his word uh, and in his faithfulness uh, and his commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ and glory hallelujah and there was no denying, there was no denying that these men had been with Jesus. I, I mean, they talked as Jesus had talked. 
and I, I mean, with regards to Peter and uh, John, I, I mean, there was no greater compliment uh, uh, that could have been given them uh, than to say uh, that they had been uh, with Jesus. And here in our text, uh, and I mean, uh, uh, here's uh, these two men, and, and really to put it in maybe our modern vernacular, uh, they were just simply country bumpkins. Uh, they were peasants. Uh, they were common men. Uh, uh, they, were, uh, uh, they were fishermen. Uh, uh, the Bible said they were uh, ignorant uh, and unlearned. Uh, but my friend, uh, as they stood there uh, in the nation's uh, uh, highest court uh, among some of the most powerful uh, and some of the richest uh, and the most educated men of Israel, uh, uh, Peter took the word of God uh, and he was more skillful uh, uh, than the educated rabbis. Uh, and he took the word of God like a sword and he began to cut and to slash and to pierce them to their very heart. Glory, hallelujah. And these men that stood there, these, these common men, uh, men of no means and no ability, uh, uh, as they stood there in that court, uh, uh, they should have stood uh, uh, with their head down, uh, uh, shuffling their feet from side to side, uh, uh, maybe in all uh, of the place that they were in. But my friend, uh, they were not like that. Uh, but they resembled uh, ambassadors uh, uh, from heaven uh, who had come to deliver uh, the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory, hallelujah. There's no doubt that they had been with Jesus. No doubt that Peter and John had been with Jesus. The Bible says in verse 13, they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. I thought about that and thought about a message the Lord allowed me to preach many, many years ago over at Old Fashioned. Uh, Baptist Church uh, on the grand mark of a Christian. And I thought about some other things. And, uh, but I begin, and I begin to think how that we could go through the Scriptures and, and look at the, uh, the witness of the Spirit. Uh, and we could look at the example that the Lord has set and how we could, uh, uh, the Bible says we, that we shall know them by their fruits. Uh, uh, but my friend, I just want to look uh, uh, tonight not uh, uh, as, a, uh, as a concordance type message of all the attributes and characteristics of a Christian. But I want to look uh, tonight simply what we find in these few verses of Scripture in Acts chapter 4. We'll limit our message tonight uh, to those por portions of Scripture between verses 8 and 13 in chapter 4. The Bible says they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. What, what, what is the what is the characteristic, may I ask you tonight, what is a person like that's been with Jesus? What's the manner of a man's speech? What's his conduct like? What's his dress like? What's his attitude like? What's his prayer life like? What's his separation like? Hey, listen, I, I mean, I, I read about in days gone by uh, where a man uh, rode a horse for many, many miles uh, to hear George Whitfield preach uh, to those great crowds uh, that gathered during the Great Awakening. And when he got back home, uh, somebody said, what? What did he look like? He said, I don't know. All I ever got a glimpse of was Jesus. And that's the way it ought to be with you and I tonight. But as we look at these scriptures, what is a man or a woman like? Hey, listen, what is a man or woman like that's been with Jesus? Oh, listen, I believe according to verse number 8, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh, the Bible says in verse number 8, then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, oh, listen, my friend, it wasn't too long ago that Peter trembled before a maid it wasn't too long ago uh, uh, that Peter denied the Lord. Uh, it hadn't been too many months uh, since he had cursed the Lord. Uh, hey, listen, Peter even went to sleep on the Lord. Peter took his eyes off the Lord in the midst of a storm. And there in the 
rough waves of that sea. Uh, hey, the Lord, uh, Peter even rebuked the Lord uh, uh, regarding uh, his death, burial, and resurrection. But now this man, uh, uh, listen, has been filled uh, with the Holy Ghost of God. Uh, and he's no longer uh, the same man that he used to be. Uh, and my friend, uh, that's a great mark of a Christian uh, that we're filled uh, with the Holy Ghost. He preached Jesus. In fact, over there in chapter 3, uh, when the, we have the record of the healing of this man that was lame on his feet, and, and there in, uh, in verse 7 of chapter 4, the Bible says, and when they had set them, speaking of uh, Peter and John, uh, uh, when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power or by what name have you done this? I remember just a few months before, Peter, I mean... Uh, uh, Hey, listen, that Galilean who had denied the Lord, now he's filled with the Holy Ghost. And Peter stands up and he begins to declare to them. He said, hey, listen, he said, Jesus did it. Jesus Christ, Jesus the Messiah. Hey, listen, Jesus of Nazareth. He said, if you want to know who did this great work, Jesus did it. And that ought to be the Bible message of every Bible-believing preacher. It's the message of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, hey, listen, uh, hey, may we in the year 2020, uh, in a year of great confusion uh, and uncertainty, uh, uh, in a day when we don't know from day to day uh, what the outcome might be, uh, may old time, a uh, uh, Holy Ghost-filled, uh, blood-bought Christians uh, uh, keep their eyes on the Lord uh, and have a message of Jesus uh, uh, to preach uh, to a lost and a dying world. Glory, hallelujah. They said, by what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done unto this impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it made known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, well, glory, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. And Peter, this man who at one time acted on impulse and grew fearful, uh, this man who's been emboldened by the Holy Ghost, uh, he takes the Word of God uh, like a sharp two-edged sword uh, and he begins to pierce the very heart of those uh, and he twists it uh, and he gives it a threefold twist uh, because he's about to preach a message uh, of Jesus Christ to them. You know, he, when Peter preached this message, he made everybody in the crowd mad that day. He made the Pharisees mad because he said, he said, you're the ones that took and crucified him. He made the Sadducees mad because he said he's, he raised again. He's resurrected. And my friend, oh, listen. Hey, not only was Peter filled with the Holy Ghost, but may I say tonight, the Bible says they, they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. What is a man like? What's a woman like? What's a preacher like? That's been with Jesus. Not only are they filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, but my friend, oh, listen, uh, I, I mean, Peter, when he began to preach, uh, hey, like every Bible believing preacher, uh, uh, he preached heaven sweet uh, and hell hot, uh, and he preached on sin, uh, and he preached on their sin, uh, and he made known their guilt. He made known their guilt. We see it in verse number 11. The Bible said, well, glory. He said, this, talking about Jesus, this is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Clearly, Peter was laying the blame 
right at their feet. Oh, they had rejected uh, the Lord of glory. He preached on their guilt. Uh, they were guilty. Clearly, they had rejected the messianic prophecies uh, uh, there, especially in Psalm chapter 118 and verse 22, uh, uh, where the Bible said, The stone uh, which the builders refused is become the head of of the corner. Hey, when Peter preached on that, he did not need to elaborate. He did not need to go into detail because every educated rabbi and every man in the room knew what he was preaching, that they had crucified the Lord of glory. He made known their guilt. I'm so thankful. And God's given us a space of grace here at Liberty Baptist Church. God's allowing us to continue to have church and, and uh, in spite of our inability and may I say tonight I'm the first one to confess hey without the Lord I am nothing and I learned a long time ago that if God's not in the arrangements uh, there'll not be much preaching and I need the Lord's help uh, but I'm glad uh, that the wind still blows uh, and the Holy Spirit of God still moves uh, and there's power in the preach word uh, and every now and then uh, uh, some poor sinner uh, uh, comes and receives Christ uh, in our midst I'm thankful for the one that got saved this past Sunday morning. Oh, listen. And didn't get saved because we were preaching on seven steps to success. I didn't get saved because we were preaching on how to manage your money in difficult financial days. I didn't get saved because we were making recommendations on how to guard your health in these certain times. But we preached a message of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and a man got delivered from his sin and got gloriously saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory, hallelujah. What does a man or woman look like that's been with Jesus? The Bible says they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. I mean, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Peter made known their guilt. And my friend, not only did he make known their guilt, but he made known Christ's glory. Oh, listen, we see that in the latter part of verse 11. And the Bible said, uh, uh, he said, uh, he said, this is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Hey, listen, despite of the fact, in spite of the fact that Jesus died on an old rugged cross, uh, hey, listen, in spite of the fact that he was rejected uh, by the religious leaders of the day, uh, in spite of the fact that he was mocked and spat upon uh, and he was bruised and beaten uh, and scourged, my friend, uh, uh, the reality is uh, he 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 bore our sin upon the cross. Uh, he died in my place and in your place. Uh, he was buried uh, and my friend, he arose uh, on the third and appointed morning uh, and he's ascended back to the Father and he's seated at the right hand of the majesty on high. No greater glory could be given or attributed to our Savior than the fact that He had died for our sin, overcome death, hell, and the grave, and was uh, seated at the right hand of God on high. Oh, listen. What does a man look like that's been with Jesus? What does a woman look like that's been with Jesus? Oh, oh they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, uh, Peter here, this gospel preacher, uh, uh, in the early days of the church, uh, made known their guilt. Uh, he made known the glory of Christ. And also, my friend, uh, we see in verse 12, he made known God's grace. I think maybe one of the most endearing and sweetest of all scriptures of the Bible. We see it there in verse number 12. He said, neither, now this is spirit-filled man who's preaching. I mean, he's anointed of the Holy Ghost. The power of God rests upon him. He's no longer this coward uh, hiding somewhere. Uh, he's no longer uh, fearful for his life. But he's been emboldened uh, by the Holy Ghost. Uh, and he preaches God's grace. Uh, and he says, neither is there salvation in any other. <laughs> well, glory. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby 
We must be saved. Oh, listen, there's so much more in this chapter, both preceding and after. But these are the words that God has given me from verses 7 through 13. And I pray it's been a help to you tonight, wherever you are, and for the very few of the staff that's here tonight, uh, and uh, for all of you that may be at home or wherever you're at this evening, may I remind you tonight that Jesus is still on the throne, and Jesus still saves, uh, and Jesus is still the friend of publican and sinners. And wherever you might be tonight, oh, listen, I I wish you could be right here at Liberty Baptist Church, but if God has dealt with your heart in whatever way, saint, Uh, a saint or a lost person like, let me encourage you wherever you're at, just to bow on your knees and seek God. Oh, listen, if you're lost, oh, just find a place and get off somewhere and say, God, I'm sorry for my sin. And God, I repent and I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Save me for Christ's sake. I'm I'm not telling you tonight what to say, but I'm saying that's the attitude of your heart. And my friend, uh, seek the Lord because there's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved.